Well, hello everyone. Happy New Year. And uh, welcome back to uh, Big Discussions 76. Let me make sure I can see myself there. Uh, I want to thank the one person who liked this stream even before I did it. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you uh, set streams up. And for whatever reason, you have to push the stream back like I did last night, and then someone leaves a like, and sometimes people leave more than one like. Uh, so yeah, if you're watching, please hit that like button. If you're new, uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I want to thank the, uh, the 1,700th subscriber. I think I got there uh, and then Either someone left or YouTube unsubscribed the person, but someone resubscribed. So now I'm back at 1700 and hopefully I'm just going to go forward. But once again, happy new year, everyone. Uh, everyone's been streaming and I decided to jump into the party myself. I couldn't let everyone else stream and me not stream and I had to jump into the party. So tonight we're going to talk about, um, something uh, that may be coming in society. Uh, you all know that I am uh, an aspiring author and uh, authors capture the current times and they comment on the current times. And um, I've been uh, reading uh, this book, I told you about it, uh, Men Without Work, uh, the, the post COVID edition by Nicholas Eberstadt. There's a, a large number of men uh, out there uh, in the world not working. Uncle Ron Wills just made a video about it. There are numerous men not working. They have reasons for not working. Uh, I'm also reading um, The Richer Sex. Shout out to the master teacher. So I've become very interested with societal trends and what's happening in society. And after the intro, I'm going to tell you all how I came up with this topic. And it comes from my science channel. So I'll see you on the other side of the intro. Let me see who's, who commented over here. That is Art Newstall. What's going on, Art Newstall? I saw the link you sent me. Appreciate that. It gets late. <laughs> You're on the West Coast, so I can't always jump on. If anyone's watching and wants to make a donation to the channel, the super chat is live, uh, and my cash app and PayPal are there. I'm going to play my jazz intro, which I'm going to update soon, and then I'll jump in and then jump off. Our, our new stall, you guys go for like five to six hours. Man, Whew. salute to you guys. All right, uh, the intro. I'll see you on the other side.
All right, everyone. Well, well, once again, welcome back to Big Discussions uh, 76. Uh, this is my original channel uh, and my goal, I've said this before, is to turn this channel into a bit of a think tank and a bit of an information center. And you're gonna see more interviews. Uh, I had Ron Wills on uh, at the beginning of December and I wanna have more authors on. Uh, but yeah, Ram had a, a very interesting video uh, actually, two videos in the last month. One was talking about uh, the dangers of uh, so many men not being in the workforce. And then um, his last video on that was a bit of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was commentary on that topic, but it was a bit of a check to men who aren't working and men who refuse uh, to work. So I'm reading this book right now, uh, Men Without Work. This is written by Nicholas Eberstadt uh, from the American Enterprising or the American Enterprise Institute. It's the AEI. I believe it's the American Enterprising Institute. Well, I'll know that before I interview him, but my intention is to interview him and other intellectuals. Um, so I'm very interested in societal trends and uh, what's happening now in the world. I think we're, we're living through some things, we're witnessing some things uh, that we certainly wouldn't have seen coming years ago. Uh, and we're living through things that certainly our parents uh, and uh, their parents who helped put these things into place uh, did not see coming. So, what is coming? One thing that's coming is uh, automation. So, for those of you who don't know, I have a science and technology YouTube channel. It's called Big Discussions 76, Science and Technology. And uh, just after the Christmas holiday, uh, I couldn't get here to Buffalo, so I was stranded out in North Central New York State. Uh, I had an I had an interview with Dr. Patrick Dix, uh, who is an expert on automation. Uh, I first saw Dr. Dix over on uh, Erica Williams' channel. I like Erica's channel, uh, Classy Climb. I think that, I think that's what she calls it. She talks about money and business and entrepreneurship. Um, I like to interview Erica one day as well. Uh, but I saw Dr. Dix over there. He's a STEM guy. I'm a STEM guy, and I said, I've got to interview this guy. Uh, and he's becoming a rising star right now, by the way. But he, we talked about automation. We talked about all the jobs that are forecasted to be wiped away in the next uh, 20 years. Uh, and I, I think it just sheds a different perspective on everything that's happening now, all the, the, um, the culture wars, the gender wars, every, everything that's happening. What's going to happen to people if they can't work? What's going to happen to people if they become useless? What's going to happen to people if they become obsolete? And I think this also sheds light on the population problem. From from the way things are shaping out, it's, it's seeming like we're just not going to need as many people as we have right now. Uh, and, uh, and in my mind, I'm seeing that everything that we're, we're going through right now, it seems to be interconnected. I don't know who's setting all this up. I don't know who's masterminding all these things, but it seems like everything we're seeing and experiencing right now is interconnected. Uh, a low birth rate, uh, our country being below replacement, the coming automation, the immigration, everything is interconnected. Okay, I have two samples here, or two excerpts from my discussion with Dr. Dix. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to go take a look at it, uh, if for no other reason to think about what you're going to do in the coming years, should there no longer be a need for your career and your skill set. Uh, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. This is the link to my discussion with Dr. Patrick Dix over on my science and uh, technology YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not subbed over there, please uh, consider subbing. I talk about a myriad of science topics over there. 
I think the next one I want to cover is uh, freezing eggs. That's a hot topic today. And uh, that's a science story. That's the video. That's the link to my interview with Dr. Dix. It's about an hour and a half. You got to think about what you're going to do and how, you, how you're going to prepare yourself and protect yourself from what's coming. So I would encourage you all to take a look. And again, hit, hit that subscribe button. So I have two excerpts from that discussion. Uh, and then I'm going to read this article that Dr. Dix shared with me. The Rise of the Useless Class. This is excerpt number one. Uh, Art Neustall uh, was there in the chat. He's an educator. Uh, and one of the one of the things me and Dr. Dix talked about was the useless education today's children uh, are getting and where that's going to lead them 10 to 20 years from now. Here goes. 10 to 1. So on the education front, I saw a question where I think it Miss KP Bailey was talking about the traditional school curriculum. Yes. And I've said this to deans and everybody. The school curriculum is very crappy. Um, most of the things they're sending kids to school for is very useless very useless. Um, educate your kids yourself to have a work ethic and to know right from wrong. The They're sending kids now to school for degrees they can't even use in the next two to three years. So you have some of these kids that go spend $70,000 to say, I graduated from Wake Forest or UNC, but you're broke. That liberal arts degree does not matter out here. And these people end up being Bartista, Bartistas and they're real grumpy with the world. People don't really want to work hard. They want you to do it for them and give them, give them everything else. So, yes, that that's a little rant. That's, you know, I'll stop right there on it. But, yeah, the, the curriculum is very, very outdated. So as Dr. Dix was speaking and as we were moving through the Q&A, it occurred to me, wow, if all these things are coming, we're not going to need as many people as we have in the country right now. <laughs> and Dr. Dix, in fact, said, yeah, we're not going to need all of these people. Uh, and when you think about that, when you think about the country, uh, our country and most of the Western countries being below replacement, that kind of puts a different spin on it. Again, maybe much of this is has been pre-thought out and maybe much of this has been pre-orchestrated. This is where Dr. Dix, this is where, where I come to the revelation. And this is where Dr. Dix says, yeah, we're not going to need as many people in this country. Uh, Miss KP Bailey, always good to see you. She says, uh, this is fascinating and a bit scary at the same time. You know, Dr. Dix, when you were talking, uh, you know, there, there are some things going on with the population right now as well. I was thinking, you know what? W with all this stuff, you may not need as many people. You don't. Well, you don't need as many people. Mm -mm, you don't at all. Um, so society will be able to go go along with fewer people. Well, um, there's an article from 2017. Y'all can Google this. It's called The Rise of the Useless Classes. We're going to have useless people in society. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I've said it on Erica's channel. Most people are already useless. Um, they really serve no purpose to the world. They really don't. Um, and you're going to have more people. So the thing is, what do you do with these useless people? So in other words, entry level, no, not entry level, no white collar jobs, lawyers. Oh, there are high paid white collar jobs too, like accountants, lawyers um, that are going to also feel this too. Not the low level people, high up people are going to feel this too. So everybody is going to feel this. No group, no race or no gender is going to escape this. So um, you're going to have useless people. And the thing is, what do you do with them? I know that's a tough term, but there's an article from February 2017. The title of it is The Rise of the Useless Class. Everybody can go Google that and read it. The Rise of the Useless Class. OK, so I was sitting here watching that interview with my mother and there are people who don't know that this stuff is coming. And there are people who don't have, who have never heard this before. And I think my mother was a little uh, shocked to hear him say. There are useless people in society. Um, so I'm going to read that article. It's, it's not long. It's in the description box below. 
if you want to keep a copy of it for yourself and think. Uh, and it, it discusses many of the careers and fields that are projected to go away due to automation, artificial intelligence, and uh, machine learning. So it's whichever career you're in, whichever field you're in, this is important to think about. Hey, I want to thank everyone who supports my science and technology channel. I always see Aquatechi show up over there. I always see Doug show up over there. Uh, sometimes uh, Miss uh, KP Bailey, she comes over. So I just want to shout out and acknowledge everyone who, su who supports that channel. Because science and technology, it's, it's in all of our lives. Uh, whether you know it or not, um, it's not always the sexiest topic, uh, and it only speaks to a certain number of people. So I want to thank those people who come over there and watch that. Okay, the rise of the useless class. Um, what do you do with people who no longer have any use? What's the cost? of having people that you have to take care of who are no longer useful. All things to think about going forward. And please let me know what you think in the chat right there. I see I have a small crowd here, but as I read through this, let me know what you all think in the chat because this channel is about thinking. All right. Once again, shout out to Dr. Patrick Dix for turning me onto this. This is The Rise of the Useless Class. This was written on February 24th, 2017 by Yuva uh, Noah Harari. I think that person is uh, Israeli or Jewish. Okay, there's the thumbnail there. Uh, historian Yuval Noah Harari offers a bracing prediction just as mass industrial industrialization created the working class, the AI revolution will create a new unworking class. And some would argue that that new unworking class has already been created. By the way, let me, I'm going to minimize this really quickly. I'm going to start talking about what I've, what I've been learning in this book. It's a short read. I'm about halfway through. The author, Nicholas Eberstadt, he actually start, starts talking about who are the unworking uh, men and a large chunk of the men who are not working look like me. They're black men, and so that's gonna. So, with that being said, then you have to ask why there are so many men in general not working, but why are there so many black men, um, so many melanated men of African descent who have just opted out of working? Why? When you start to peel that back, that may lead to some uncomfortable answers for society. Okay. Joe, the average brother says, does this have anything to do with uh, Thomas Malthus's idea of useless eaters? I think he was worried about overpopulation, if, if I recall correctly. Um, so I believe that was back in the 70s. So if you're worried about overpopulation, it's not inconceivable that some people will be sitting around thinking, how do we decrease the population? Just, I'm just speculating here, but that thought has occurred to me. Guys, keep the thoughts coming. I'm gonna to get to the article now. Okay. All right. The most important question in the 21st century economics may well be, what should we do with all the superfluous people once we have highly intelligent non-conscious algorithms that can do almost everything better than humans? This is not entirely, uh, this is not an entirely new question. People have long feared that mechanization might cause mass unemployment. This never happened because as old professions became obsolete, new professions evolved. And there was always something humans could do better than machines. Yet this is not a law of nature. 
and nothing guarantees it will continue to be like that in the future. The idea that humans will always have a unique ability beyond the reach of non-conscious algorithms is just wishful thinking. The current scientific answer uh, to this pipe dream can be summarized in three simple principles. Organisms are algorithms. Every animal, including Homo sapiens, that's us, is an assemblage of organic algorithms shaped by natural selection over millions of years of evolution. I never, I never thought about it that way, but we are algorithms. We're always thinking, we're always calculating, we're always decision-making, and that's what we're training machines to do, to think, to calculate, to make decisions. We do that naturally. Well, some humans don't, uh, and those are people we have to take care of, but that's what we do. We're algorithms. Two, uh, algorithmic calculations are not affected by the materials from which the calculator is built. Whether an abacus is made of wood, iron, or plastic, two beads plus two beads equals four beads. Hence, there is no reason to think that organic algorithms can do things that non-organic algorithms will never be able to replicate or surpass, as long as the calculations remain valid. What does it matter whether the algorithms are manifested in carbon or silicon? True. At present, there are numerous things that uh, organic algorithms do better than non-organic ones. And experts have repeatedly declared that some things will forever remain beyond the reach of non-organic algorithms. But it turns out that uh, forever often means no more than a decade or two. Until a short time ago, facial recognition was a favorite example of something that babies accomplished easily, but which escaped even the most powerful computers. Today, facial recognition programs are able to identify people far more efficiently and quickly than humans can. In 2004, Professor Frank Levy from MIT and Professor Richard Murnane from Harvard published research on the job market listing those professions most likely to undergo automation. Truck driving was given as an example of a job that could not possibly be automated in the foreseeable future a mere 10 years ago. Google and Tesla can not only imagine this, but are actually making it happen. Okay. That quote is in this text, so I'm not going to read that. If you're just coming in, please hit that like button. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to donate something to the channel, my Cash App and PayPal are here. And the Super Chat, I think, is still live. I know some people have lost their Super Chats. I don't know why, but yeah, it's still live. Okay. In fact, as time goes by, it becomes easier and easier to replace humans with computer algorithms not merely because the algorithms are getting smarter, but also because humans are professionalizing. Ancient hunter-gatherers mastered a very wide variety of skills in order to survive, which is why it would be immensely difficult to design a robotic hunter-gatherer, such as uh, such a robot would have to know how to prepare spear points from flintstones find edible mushrooms in a forest, track down a mammoth, coordinate a charge with a dozen other hunters, and use medicinal herbs to bandage any wounds. However, a taxi driver or a cardiologist specializes in a much narrower niche than a hunter-gatherer, which makes it easier to replace them with AI. AI is nowhere near human-like existence but 99% of human qualities and abilities are simply redundant for the performance of most modern jobs. For AI, 
to squeeze humans out of the job market, it need only outperform us in, in the specific abilities a particular profession demands. As algorithms push humans out of the job market, wealth and power might become concentrated in the hands of the tiny elite that owns the all powerful algorithms, creating unprecedented social and political inequality. Alternatively, the algorithms might themselves become the owners. Human law already recognizes intersubjective entities like corporations and nations as legal persons. Though Toyota or Argentina has neither a body nor a mind, they are subject to international laws, they can own land and money, and they can sue and be sued in court. We might soon grant similar status to algorithms. An algorithm could then own a transportation empire or a venture capital fund without having to obey the wishes of any human master. Before dismissing the idea, remember that most of our planet is already legally owned by non-human intersubjective entities, namely nations and corporations. Indeed, 5,000 years ago, much of Sumer was owned by imaginary gods, such as Enki and Inanna. If gods can possess land and employ people, why not algorithms? So what will people do? Art is often said to provide us with our ultimate sanctuary. In a world where computers have replaced doctors, drivers, teachers, and even landlords, would everyone become an artist? Yet it is hard to see why artistic creation would be safe from uh, the algorithms. According to uh, life, the life sciences, art is not the product of some en enchanted spirit or metaphysical soul, but rather the, of the organic algorithms recognizing mathematical patterns. If so, there's no reason why non-organic algorithms couldn't master it. Okay, guys, this is, an, this is a short one and it's almost done. Let me know what you think in the chat. Once again, this came from my interview with Dr. Patrick Dix over on my uh, Science and Technology YouTube channel. The link to the interview was there. And I'm going to play the snippet again right now where Dr. Dix told me about this article. We were talking about the possibility that we may no longer need as, as many people as we have right now. Uh, Miss KP Bailey, always good to see you. She says, uh, this is fascinating and a bit scary at the same time. You know, Dr. Dix, when you were talking, uh, you know, there, there are some things going on with the population right now as well, I was thinking, you know what? W with all this stuff, you may not need as many people. You don't. Well, you won't need as many people. Mm -mm, you don't at all. Um, so society will be able to go go along with fewer people. Well, um, there's an article from 2017. Y'all can Google this. It's called The Rise of the Useless Classes. We're going to have useless people in society. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I've said it on Erica's channel. Most people are already useless. Um, they really serve no purpose to the world. They really don't. Um, and you're going to have more people. So the thing is, what do you do with these useless people? So in other words, entry level, no, not entry level, no white collar jobs, lawyers. Oh, there are high paid white collar jobs too, like accountants, lawyers. Um, that are going to also feel this too. Not the low level people, high up people are going to feel this too. So everybody is going to feel this. No group, no race or no gender is going to escape this. So um, you're going to have useless people. And the thing is, what do you do with them? I know that's a tough term, but there's an article from February 2017. The title of it is The Rise of the Useless Class. Everybody can go Google that and read it. The Rise of the Useless Class. Okay, in the 19th century, 
the Industrial Revolution created a huge urban proletariat and socialism spread because no other creed managed to answer the unprecedented needs, hopes, and fears of this new working class. Liberalism eventually defeated socialism only by adopting the best parts of the socialist program. In the 21st century, we might witness the creation of a massive new unworking class, people devoid of any economic, political, or even artistic value who contribute nothing to the prosperity, power, and glory of society. This useless class will not merely be unemployed, it will be unemployable. In 2013, two Oxford researchers, Carl uh, Benedict Frey and Michael A. Osborne, published The Future of Employment, in which they surveyed the likelihood of different professions being taken over by computer algorithms within the next 20 years. And they estimated that 47% of US jobs are at high risk. So if you fall under any one of these careers I'm, I'm about to read, just stop and think about uh, where your field is going and also think about how to how you might be able to be able to course correct to make sure that you're still useful in the years to come okay for example there is a 99 percent probability that by 20 33, so we're 10 years out, human telemarketers and insurance underwriters will lose their jobs to algorithms. I know at least one person who won't, who will not like to hear that about insurance algorithms. Uh, Salchi says, what's going on Salchi? The, another source, power and prediction, the disruptive, the disruptive economics of artificial intelligence by Abby uh, Goldfire. Yep. Do you all notice that most of these authors, what ethnicity they are? That's just an observation I made when Salchi presented this. These, the author of this and this author, do you notice something about their ethnicity? Okay. There is a 98, um, I'll read that again. For example, there is a 99% probability that by 2033, human telemarketers and insurance underwriters will lose their jobs to algorithms. There is a 98% probability that the same will happen for sports referees. Well, based upon what happened in the, the Fiesta Bowl with my Michigan Wolverines, that'll probably be a good thing. Automate the referees. Cashiers, 97%. Chefs, 96%. Waiters, 94%. Paralegals, 94%. Tour guys, 91%. Bakers, 89%. Bus drivers, 89%. Construction laborers, 88%. Veterinary assistants, 86%. Security guards, 84%. Sailors, 83%. Bartenders, 77%. Archivists, 76%. Carpenters, 72%. Lifeguards, 67%. There are, of course, some safe jobs. The likelihood that computer algorithms will displace archaeologists by 2033 is only 0.7% because their job requires highly sophisticated uh, types of pattern recognition that doesn't produce huge profits. And it is improbable that corporations or government will make the necessary uh, investment to automate archaeology within the next 20 years. If you watch my... Um, my interview with uh, Dr. Dix, he keeps talking about uh, critical thinking skills. Geez, I can't remember. The interview's there, the link to the interview is here. But there's a, there's a certain set of skills that Dr. Dix kept reiterating uh, would be important in the future. And, and those skill sets will buffer certain people from uh, automation. But the interview was there. Please take a look and please uh, subscribe over there if you haven't. Okay. 
Diaspora L says, uh, peace to the chat and the panel. Would this be a new type of Darwinism? It could be, yeah, yeah. Uh, Agenda 21 presence is its own issues, even if the globe and landmass could support arguably one billion. Okay. Please hit that like button if you haven't. I wonder if the master teacher shared this. He probably did. I see the numbers kind of going up. Okay, I'm almost done here. Of course, by 2033, many new professions are likely to appear. For example, virtual world designers, but such professions will probably require much more creativity and flexibility than current run of the mill jobs. And it is unclear whether 40 year old cashiers or insurance agents will be able to reinvent themselves as virtual world designers. Try to imagine a virtual world created by an insurance agent. A virtual world designer sounds like STEM to me. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So who's training for that now? If you have kids or nephews or nieces, you might want to tell them that that's something that will be necessary in 10 years. And even if they do so, uh, the pace of, of progress is such that within another decade, they might have to reinvent themselves yet again. After all, algorithms might well outperform humans in designing virtual worlds, too. The crucial problem isn't creating new jobs. The crucial problem is creating new jobs that humans perform better than algorithms. Since we do not know uh, how the job market would look in 2030 or 2040 today, we have no idea what to teach our kids. Most of what they currently learn at school will probably be irrelevant by the time they are 40. Traditionally, life has been divided into two main parts, a period of learning followed by a period of working. Very soon, this traditional model will become utterly obsolete and the only way for humans to stay in the game will be to keep learning throughout their lives and to reinvent themselves repeatedly. Many, if not most, humans may be unable to do so. How about that? The coming technological uh, bonanza will probably uh, make it feasible to feed and support people even without any effort from their side. Well, what will keep them occupied and content? One answer might be uh, drugs and computer games. Uh, unnecessary people might spend increasing amounts of time within 3D virtual reality worlds that would provide them with far more excitement and emotional engagement than the drab reality outside. Yet such a development would deal a mortal blow to the liberal belief in the sacredness of human life and of human experiences. What's so sacred about useless bums who pass their days devouring artificial experiences? Some experts and thinkers, such as Nick Bostrom, uh, his TED talk was, what happens when our computers get smarter than we are? Warn that humankind is unlikely to suffer this degradation because once artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence it might simply exterminate humankind okay so now we're thinking about uh terminator here the ai would likely uh do so uh, either for fear that humankind would turn against it and try to pull its plug or in pursuit of some some unfathomable um, i'm sorry or in pursuit of some unfathomable goal of its own it would be extremely difficult for humans to control the motivation of a system smarter than themselves. That's that's the plot line for Terminator, Skynet, the T-1000. Uh, even programming, um, even pre-programming an AI system with seemingly benign goals might backfire horribly. 
One popular scenario imagines a corporation designing the first artificial super intelligence and giving it an innocent test such as calculating pi. Before anyone realizes what is happening, the AI takes over the planet, eliminates the human race, launches a campaign of conquest to the ends of the galaxy, and transforms the entire known universe into a giant supercomputer that for billions upon billions of years calculates pi ever more accurately. After all, this is the divine mission its creator gave it. So that could be Terminator, or it could be The Matrix. Of course, in The Matrix, you know that the computers used us as the energy source for it to stay alive. So, but for the sake of this, I think the main point of this article was that um, some people uh, and their skill sets are going to become obsolete uh, sooner than later. And that's what, um, that's in large part what me and Dr. Dix uh, talked about over, uh, over on my uh, science and technology channel. Um, what's, what are people going to do? Um, who's, who's going to, now, if they introduce this UBI, it may be just like the gentleman uh, described in the article. Maybe at that point, it's just plugging people into the metaverse and people just kind of wandering in the metaverse all day and all night. Yeah, maybe life as we know it is will we'll cease at some point. Maybe for the most part, people, people will be plugged into the internet uh, entirely. And, and, and indefinitely, who knows? Joe, the average brother says, um, the Terminator, Cyclones, or the Borg, all those story arcs dealt with the elimination of humans. Uh, Dinah, Isher L, AI use, uses us to garner its personality. That's interesting. And then D. Stu says, it sounds like the useless class will be citizens of the metaverse. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. But I think, um, yeah, if, if, if you don't get anything from this article or my discussion with Dr. Dix, that's in the description box below if you haven't read it. Uh, the link is here. Uh, if, if nothing, his um, his message is to prepare yourself and just to know that this is coming and to try to prepare yourself for what is coming. I mean, think about um, all the people who have trained in uh, human resources. I know that when I was in school, uh, I, I knew a lot of uh, mostly ladies. Uh, apparently, human resources is a female dominated field. So for all those individuals who were trained in human resources, what's gonna happen to them? They'll, they'll be jobless uh, if this all is true. What about the other careers? What about the other jobs that will no longer uh, need uh, humans? Something to think about. It's something to think about. The other thing is that it's important to also take a look at what's not being discussed. So uh, my mom, uh, she watches uh, the mainstream news. If you guys saw my interview with Aaron Cleary, you know I don't watch the mainstream news anymore. But um, the big thing now is this uh, Kevin, um, what's his name? I don't even know his name. Kevin, Kevin something or other in the house. He's trying to become house speaker. And so the big story is uh, Kevin, I, mean, I should know who this is.
Kevin, I bet you it comes right up. Kevin McCarthy. Yeah. So the big story right now is Kevin McCarthy trying to become the Speaker of the House. He can't get the votes. But everybody's talking about Kevin McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy. Everybody's talking about Ukraine. Uh, but nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about the national deficit. Nobody's talking about the growing number of uh, men not working. Nobody's talking about these important things. So always keep your eyes on what our higher ups and our political class, always keep your eyes on what they're not talking about. And what the mainstream media is not talking about. It seems like the goal is to keep us distracted with everything else, but the most important things, like what's going to happen to us all in the future, they're not talking about that. So I would say that that is strange, but it's probably by design as well. Uh, let's see. Diasport L says HR has evolved to, or at least added a duality, diversity, equity, inclusion, its social equivalent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dina, Dina, uh, Yasha L, the distraction. Exactly. Yeah, everyone. So I just uh, wanted to cover this. Uh, Dr. Dix. Um, at least before uh, the new year, he was teaming up pretty regularly with Eric Williams. They were approaching this from the, the money context. Uh, he's a STEM guy. I'm a STEM guy. So I said it's a no-brainer. I have to have him over on my science channel. I uh, hope to have him back. And he, he also has a special coming out on PBS. So look out for Dr. Patrick Dix. He's a rising star in this area and uh, not a lot of people are talking about this. I'm gonna end the stream with uh, this excerpt from uh, our talk about um, the quality of education that today's young people are getting. Ten to one. So on the education front, I saw a question where I think it Miss KP Bailey was talking about the traditional school curriculum. Yes, and I've said this to deans and everybody, the school curriculum is very crappy. Um, most of the things they're sending kids to school for is very useless, very useless. Um, educate your kids yourself to have a work ethic and to know right from wrong. The They're sending kids now to school for degrees they can't even use in the next two to three years. So you have some of these kids that go spend $70,000 to say, I graduated from Wake Forest or UNC, but you're broke. That liberal arts degree does not matter out here. And these people end up being Bartista, Bartistas and they're real grumpy with the world. People don't really want to work hard. They want you to do it for them and give, give them everything else. So, yes, that, that's a little rant. And that's, you know, I'll stop right there on it. But, yeah, the, the curriculum is very, very outdated. So will there even be a need for Starbucks uh, baristas anymore? Probably not. All right, everyone, uh, I'm going to wrap this up. I haven't eaten yet. So I need to eat something. So that's it. That's the rise of the useless class. Uh, keep your eyes on that. Keep your eyes on how society is changing. And keep your eyes on um, what's happening. You know what? I'm going to give you all a little extra. This is from the interview, uh, my interview with Dr. Dix, but I think this is important to keep your eyes on as well. Give me a second here while I cue this one up. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Yep, here it is. This one stood out to me because I, I interviewed another gentleman named uh, Larry King uh, on my uh, STEM YouTube channel. Uh, and Larry King 
Larry King runs the uh, the STEM News Chronicle, and uh, he talked about this as well. Uh, the fact that there are people from other parts of the world who are being sponsored by Amazon uh, and Google, uh, and they're coming here in droves. Uh, they're not, uh, and the homegrown talent uh, is not being uh, groomed as aggressively in the stems, but these people from overseas are, and, and we're so focused on the Southwestern border uh, as it relates to immigration, but there are other people coming here and setting up shop uh, and they're getting ready to run all of these technologies. So it's almost loaded up. Okay, I'm gonna play one more for you all and then, I, then I'm gonna wrap this up. Can you all, can you all hear me? I'm getting my antenna thing here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay, it, it's gone away. Okay, I'm gonna play this last excerpt and then I'm gonna wrap up. The big bad wolf was here. Herbert, Herb, why don't I call you Herbert? Well, it says Herbert. This might be something with you doing what you do, with David doing what he does. This might be, might be something, there might be some meat on all this for you guys. But this is uh, another excerpt from my talk with Dr. Dix. UBI. Yeah, yeah. And one field we try to send people into that I've been talking about and people can argue with me is cybersecurity. They already have artificial, artificial intelligence and machine learning. They're not about to pay people $180,000 to do penetration testing. Sorry to bust everybody's bubble. You can Google that. It's machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, that is a field that's already overpopulated. And I want people to realize you have to think what's going to be popular in the next couple of years. Um, I teach a class. Oh, that's the other thing. I've been teaching school part time since 2014. I've taught over 35,000 students. You could Google my name and see all the schools, some of the schools I teach for. Um, so I teach database design all over that, like Kennesaw State in Georgia. I taught a class for Syracuse, Pepperdine, Tulane, um, a bunch of schools, graduate undergrads. So when it comes to like the education part of it, I'm very um, knowledgeable in that because I'm teaching it. And I already see our counterparts are coming over um, on F1 visas. So what I've told people, too, about the education part is uh, some of the schools will fly me out to like to Detroit or to Phoenix. If the students are here on the F-1 visa, they're sponsored by a company. These students already have undergrad software engineering degrees and they're working for Amazon and they're working for other companies. So they're here getting graduate degrees. I have to sit with them for eight hours on a Saturday just to, so they have an in-person class to meet their visa requirements. And these people are coming in by the drove. So to the regular Americans over here and especially into some of our communities, this is very serious. These people are proficient. They already know the language. They already they already live. They li not they already they already live in Chicago, L.A., Atlanta. They're already here. And I want people to really wake up. Uh, you're hearing this straight from the horse's mouth. You can't compete with these people. They already have jobs and they outwork us 10 to 1. So on the education front, I saw a question. OK, Dr. Dix, it sounds like and I want to be mindful of your time. We're right at an hour. Uh, OK, it sounds like. That's another, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that's another leg of this immigration discussion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean we're, all, we're also focused on the, the southwestern border. And I'm sure some of those people who are coming over, they're either already knowledgeable in these fields or their kids will become that knowledgeable in these fields. But it sounds like there are other folks coming from other parts of the world, too. Yeah, who exactly. Are already, already trained up. Yep. They're already here. Okay. All right, everyone, I'm going to wrap this uh, stream up. Uh, thank you to everyone who sat and listened to this. Uh, once again, if you haven't uh, uh, seen my interview with Dr. Dix, the link is here.
All of this is below in the description box. Uh, the link to the rise of the useless class is here. Uh, and as a writer myself, please consider joining my newsletter. Thank you to everyone who has joined uh, thus far. There is a, uh, a two paragraph greeting there. And then you just scroll to the bottom and hit the subscribe button and you go to you enter your email address. I'm sorry, you enter your email address in there and then you're signed up. And uh, I promise I won't give your information away to a, a third uh, party. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. And then I need to eat something. Uh, everyone stay safe out there. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're watching this on the playback. Um, you, you can donate to the channel via my cash app or PayPal here. This is below in the description box. And you can also leave a super thanks. All right, everyone, um, look for content. I'm gonna create some content on this book, Men Without Work. This is the post-pandemic edition. Uh, and there's a, our political class, they haven't really talked about this either. The growing number of uh, men not in the workforce. There's no talk about this. There's very little talk about this. Um, people are starting to talk about it now but they're not talking about it, probably with good reason, because once you start talking about it, you have to talk about the why. And the why is not always, the why is uh, sometimes painful. So look out for more content on that. Oh, red team, blue team, Gay Bay is here. Gay Bay, I think we, it's time, it's been about two years since we did your, uh, uh, our cybersecurity interview we might need to do a, uh, a follow-up on that over on my STEM channel. Herbert Lewis says, laying flat. Yep, yep. So I will say this, for those of you who are just coming in, in this book, um, Mr. Eberstadt does note that a large percentage of the non, of the unworking men are black men. Um, prime, aged working black men ages 25 to 54 uh they're not working uh and they don't have a desire to work um uh, and well there are reasons for that there are reasons for that i won't get into that now but that's a real thing that nobody's talking about uh let's see i'm going to start working on material tonight probably probably for your show with david right all right, everyone, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, have a good night. Thank you for watching. Uh, as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Uh, always do your best. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.